Oh, of course not. Your antagonism towards them is well known. Do you seek to achieve some sort of balance? Oh, you never believed in the greater good until it suited you. In the recent continuation of the Darksider series, the fire of Invital Fury has just walked right into Lordran, and I don't know how to deal with it. Small disclaimer before we get into this, I am not using my current PC for this particular review, and this review will contain spoilers for Darksiders 1 and Darksiders 2. Okay, so let's recap the War Mastered and Death In It of Editions. Wars and Chains been held accountable for starting the end of days. War swears that he never started it, but the Chart Council... They don't believe him. So after a short hundred year stint in chains, War manages to convince the Chard Council that maybe he should be allowed out to try and prove his innocence. And through no fault of his own, brings about the end of days. Plot twist by the way, whilst all this is happening, Death's out trying to clear his brother's name, meeting with makers and old enemies. In the end, he's faced with a choice. Sacrifice himself to resurrect his king, the Nephilim, or resurrect humanity. He chooses to resurrect humanity to clear War's name. So where does this game take place in the timeline? Well, it takes place before Darksiders 1, because in the intro we see War is still in chains, and it can take place just near the end of Darksiders 2, as it is stated that Death is currently missing. Both games, however, act as an expansion of the overall narrative and make you think about the overarching story with every subsequent playthrough. I honestly think there's something a lot bigger at work here. On to the story! There is a matter that requires delicate attention. We should have called Strife. He's the delicate one. So to understand the story of this game, you first need to understand that the story is kind of two parallel stories. The first story is the aftermath of the initial 99 years before war is set free, plus all the politics, and a story about Fury. To kick things off, Fury is tasked by the Char Council to seek out the seven deadly sins who have broke free of the prison and put them back. This is where we first learn that she doesn't really care for what war may or may not have done, and she's just out to seek her own agenda. The seven deadly sins have been released. By whom we cannot say, but the seven roam the earth, free of our prison. I can handle those fools in my sleep, but when this task is complete, I demand that you grant me my rightful place leading the horsemen. In the opening cinematic, we learn that Fury's selfish, angry, wanting, and blind to the bigger picture, and she's going to stop at nothing to achieve her goal once it's been set. Within the context of the story, though, Fury goes through a huge huge change in character as her task set by the council allows her to grow and become a much more level-headed protagonist. In the end, you're gonna know more about this universe than you knew going in. As well, a few old friends from previous games do show up as well, but they're in more cinematic roles than previous. Alright, so now we're just gonna go into the performance and I'm gonna say right off the bat, this was a vastly different system from what I usually use. This game ran on a Ryzen 5 1600X and an R9 390X in comparison to the i7 7700K and 1080 I used in previous reviews. The gameplay was also captured on the same computer. So I had to crank this game in a sort of an assortment of high, medium and low settings just to achieve a semi-stable 60fps. And that's not the game's fault, and it still ran like a dream with the exception of a few dips into the 30s when I went into the underwater biomes, but that was still a pretty 30fps. The environments were amazing and fit extremely well and nothing seemed out of place at all. From the lair of gluttony to the chambers of pride, the subway halls and tenement walls between, I happily say that given this weaker rig this game ran solid with no issues. If I had this game on launch, there may have been more issues. Moving right on to the gameplay, THQ and Arctic, gunfire games, if you just want to hash this out with who we can, but real talk, almost everything in this game is solid, even the hollows, the attacks, the weapon of choice for the hollows, the rage attacks for the hollows, even your wrath attack itself, those were amazing, the boss fights were incredibly fun, the puzzles were really unique and they definitely had me stumped, but the base combat man, THQ, gunfire, not everyone's a fan of Dark Souls. We thank you for the inclusion of the classic combat mode, even if it was patched in. We're still happy you did it. But to keep your game from feeling like Dark Siders 2, you made it feel more like Dark Souls 2. The big issue with this game, in my opinion, is that not everyone, including myself, likes the intensity of the difficulty that comes from Dark Souls. And that's the biggest issue, is that this game feels like Diet Dark Souls. For everyone else, I just have one word. <laughs> In conclusion, this game fits in really well with Dark Darksiders 1 and 2. Over the course of the 18 hours I played this game, I watched Fury undergo significant changes to her character, and my eyes were opened wider to the overall story packed within all three games now. Mistress, is this not everything you wanted? Finally come to you! I will be done. This is not real! Uh, what? Oh, 
It was worth a shot. You should not have made them kneel! To me, however, it was the combat that let this game down. Things such as the multi-stage and even multi-boss boss fights, hello, orange scene and small, made this game feel a lot more like Dark Souls than Dark Siders. That being said, the performance of this game was still incredible, working smooth with my mix master settings getting 60fps for the most part. I was able to try this on a Shadow Virtual Machine PC on a full Epic preset and was able to compare how it looked with my settings and honestly, there wasn't much of a difference but the game still looked better. Both were easily enjoyable experiences and highly playable. The overall performance of this game I would easily give 10 out of 10. The story, I'd also give 10 out of 10. For the gameplay however, given that it's like Dark Souls and I ain't really a big fan of Dark Souls, I gave that 6 out of 10, but overall this game is an easy 8.5 out of 10. Overall score based of all 3 scores combined divided by 3 and rounded to the nearest half number.